Verse 19, look, look at what it says. Verse 19, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. When you are put on the spot, do not worry about what you will say. Because the Holy Spirit will give you the words to speak. God will speak through you. Now, let me just say you have to have the word of God in you for the word of God to come out. And let me also say uh, you have to be willing to open your mouth and speak up for Jesus Christ when you're given the opportunity. But in that moment, the Holy Spirit will speak through you. It will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. And many of you, I, I know, have had the experience of sharing the Lord with someone, sharing the gospel with someone, and the Holy Spirit just gives you the words to speak. And all of these Bible verses come to your memory, verses that you didn't even know that you knew. And they just start coming out and, and you surprise yourself and impress yourself. Well, it's not really you. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. I think of uh, when Stephen was put on trial before the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 7. And Stephen, if you know that passage, he went through all of Israel's history and showed that the people of Israel always resisted what God was doing. They always resisted God's messengers. And Jesus was just the latest of God's messengers that they rejected. The Holy Spirit gave Stephen the words to speak. Or I think of Paul. When Paul was on trial before King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, if you're not familiar with that passage, go back and read it this afternoon. Paul was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Here he is. He's on trial before all these Roman officials, very intimidating uh, setting there in this, you know, this courtroom before all the pomp and circumstance and everything, all these Roman leaders. Paul's defending himself. His life is on the line. And what Paul does, empowered by the Holy Spirit, he turns that whole thing around and he puts King Agrippa on trial before Jesus Christ. It's amazing. You don't have to worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. He goes on in verse 21. Now, brother will deliver up brother to death. And father, his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Uh, the, the opposition may come even from your own family. Even in your own family, some of the wolves may be family members and some religious cultures. When a family member converts to Christianity, the family holds a funeral for that person and treats the person as if they're dead. And the family never speaks to them again. In other cultures, if a person converts to Christianity, the family may actually put them to death. Again, Jesus is telling us this ahead of time. As he's sending his disciples out, this is what we can expect. Again, not from everybody. But he tells us this so that we don't stumble when it happens. Jesus said it would happen. And this is the world that we're taking the gospel to. As sheep going out into the midst of wolves. Look at verse 22. And you will be hated by all. By all. For my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. He says will be hated by all because of the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in that name, isn't there? You know, you, you can talk to people about God in generic terms. But you start naming the name of Jesus, and people get uncomfortable with that. There's power in that name. And he says, you'll be hated by all because of my name. And, and at times Throughout history, this has been true. It, it's still true in many cultures and countries in the world today where the name of Jesus is hated. 
Uh, according to Open Doors, which is an international organ- organization uh, that advocates for the persecuted church, uh, they, they say, listen, 360 million Christians live in countries where they face high levels of persecution and discrimination because of the name of Jesus. That's one in seven Christians in the world. Last year, almost 6,000 Christians were put to death for their faith. Over 5,000 churches were destroyed. More Christians were killed in the 20th century than in all of the previous centuries combined. The Apostle Paul said of his own experience as a Christian, he, he said, we are treated like the garbage of the world, the scum of the earth. And, and the hatred of the name of Christ and of Christians. It's going to get progressively worse and it will hit its highest point during the tribulation period that will come upon the earth in the future. The tribulation is that seven year period where God will pour out his wrath on this Christ rejecting world. And, and as we move closer and closer to the end of the age, that persecution will increase and increase And it will reach its peak during the tribulation period. Revelation 13 tells us that during the tribulation, the Antichrist will make war against the people of God and overcome them and kill them. And Matthew chapter 24, verse 9, in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus said, speaking of the time of the tribulation, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And again, as we get closer and closer to the end of the age, the world will grow more and more hostile toward Jesus and towards Christians and towards the Bibles, towards the Bible and a biblical worldview and biblical morality. This is the world he sent us into. 